investigative lens. It is the third day after Jesus' crucifixion. Let's listen in on Mary, mother of James, and Mary Magdalene's conversation, which gives us a preview of the events leading to the crucifixion. I couldn't sleep. Every time I closed my eyes, I could see him, hanging there on the cross, the blood dripping down his face from the cuts on his head. Terrible, terrible. Mary, please, we were there. You think we could forget it? How could this have happened? There is so much left for him to do. I heard from Mark that he had an opportunity to escape, but instead he walked right into the trap on purpose. Peter said that at the Passover meal, he had broken bread and said this was his body, and poured out wine saying this was his blood. And John said he talked of going to his father, and something like, in a little while, you will see me no more, and then after a little while, you will see me. I did not always understand what Jesus was saying. I will miss him so much. We all will. What did he mean, after a little while, you will see me? Meanwhile, in the garden of Joseph of Ebnathia, where Jesus is buried, the gardener and his wife prepare for a quiet day of work. Come on, hurry up. It's not the Sabbath, you know. It's almost dawn. You have work. I'm, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. Now you treat that tomb with a lot of respect. Keep it nice and tight. I hear you. You said that yesterday. Besides, I don't know what to deal with. Deal is. It's not like he's family or anything. I never even knew the guy. You should have got to know him. <sighs> he said that yesterday. But now it's too late. He is gone. <sighs> yeah, you said that yesterday too. Perhaps you are right. Maybe I should have taken time to get to know him. But I didn't. It's too late now. And there's nothing we can do about it. That holy man treated like a common thief. Up there between a pair of thugs. Makes my blood boil to think about it. You not? Yeah, you said that yesterday too. But he certainly will not be missed. Not by the religious lot he will. I'll hand him that. He sure knew how to stir them up. <laughs> they won't miss him. But us ordinary folk will. But I guess that's the end of his teaching and his wonderful, wonderful, wonderful miracles. <sighs> you know, if you don't stop chatting, I need a miracle to get to work on time. The investigation of the empty tomb begins. This is the city, Jerusalem. It's a city filled with tension, suspicions, and hatred. It is a melting pot of diverse peoples and cultures. The largest resident population is Jews. Roman legions occupy the city and maintain law and order for its residents under the direction of a Roman governor. It is late afternoon, and the tribune in charge of the local law enforcement group is speaking to his chief investigator. They are responding to the scene of a reported burglary. The Tribune has been directed to personally investigate the burglary that occurred in the rear garden 
of a home that is owned by a well-to-do local resident, Joseph of Arimathea. We join the Tribune explaining the nature of this assignment to his chief investigator who will assist him with the investigation. Centurion. to a sealed tomb located in the garden behind this home. You and I have been ordered to conduct an investigation. I'm glad to have my way. Was anything stolen from the tomb? The, no. Only the body of the Nazarene we executed. He was buried three days ago in the tomb. Oh, a uh, graveyard robbery? It makes sense for some point. Oh, just the fact that the owner of the property is a wealthy merchant, the tomb under the protection of the Rome, and the deceased was a local agitator with a large following. Two of our guys were on guard duty watching when this incident occurred. It is believed that they must have been sleeping while on duty. Oh, uh, that makes us look real bad. What did our man have to say about this? Not much, seeing they aren't sure of what happened. That's why we're here to re-interview them and then to find some clues. Do we have anything to go on? Not really. The lab have already examined the place and gone. We have to re-interview the soldiers and then find some clues on our own. Uh, we do know one thing. What's that? The corpse didn't just get up and walk away by himself. Well, I think that's her coming right now. Okay. The first person to be questioned is Martha. She is charge of the residence while the owner, Joseph, is away. I'm so glad you officers are here. My name is Martha and I'm the one who called. Just yesterday, my master went out of town to get away from all the confusion, noise, and crowds of people that are in town for the crucifixion on Friday. And, as he, and he wanted to get some peace and quiet. And as usual, he left me in charge of the household, but he'll be furious when he gets back and finds out what happened. Why don't you tell us what happened? Just the facts, man. Well, apparently, the master knew the person who was executed and he wanted to give him a proper burial. So he donated his own burial site and convinced the Romans to let him bury the man there. Right. Was anyone present in between the time the body was discovered and the burglary happened? Well, the gardener was there all weekend and he was the one who figured out that the, that the stone had been rolled away and that the guards had fallen asleep. But, and he's right over there at the greenhouse. He's wanting me to go get him. Yes, please. One more question. Do you have any idea who would have done this and why? I have no idea, but I hope you find them. The Tribune wants you to go see him. Oh yes, I've seen it, I've seen it, I've seen it. You saw what? Happened? Yes. I was, I was standing over there watering my plants, and then I saw two fellers in all white coming from the sky. Can you describe them? Yes, the young fellers, they almost looked like angels, and they motioned towards the guards. The guards, they collapsed. I think they were Polacks. I was so afraid I couldn't move. Huh? What happened then? And then uh, one of them, they rolled away the stone all by himself, and sat, they all sat as calmly as can be. You won't believe what happened next. Okay, but just the facts now. Just the facts. Okay, then a man in all white, he came, in all white robes, he came out of the tomb. He, uh, the guard, the angels, they sat, they kneeled to him. And then I had to, I knew what to do next. I had to go away to the service quarter to retrieve Martha. What happened then? And then she sent for y'all. I was so upset. I had to work on the other side of the garden. Okay, can you bring them out for us? Uh, I think. Someone else who saw what happened? It was uh, Cook, or Seth Cookies, and I'm sure if you wanna, let me go get them, right? Yes, please. Okay. okay. 
I didn't want to bother you while you were talking to the others, but this note came to you by courier. He asked me to deliver it to you. Oh, good. It's called a lab report. Uh, Centurion, uh, Trivia, can you speak to them while I read this? Yes. What time did the two of you arrive? And what time did, did you see anything unusual on the way? Well, when we got here, I did notice the tomb had been opened. We had to walk right by it coming in the water. Oh, yeah. There were two, two soldiers standing in front of the open tomb. in a closet. few minutes. Did you see anything time. else unusual? Um, well, on our way here, we passed a woman coming from the direction of the garden. She was crying and looked frustrated. She kept saying, they've taken him, they've taken him. She walked right up to me, looked me in my eye, and asked me, where have they taken him? I tell you, I was scared. We walked straight here after that. That's all for now. You may go, but don't leave the premise. Oh, and tell those two soldiers who were guarding the tomb. The Tribune wants to see them now. The lab guys are puzzled. There is no human trace inside of the tomb. This investigation is getting creepy. I think it's time to talk to the guards. You were on guard duty when the incident happened? Yes, sir. All right, soldiers. What happened? Just the facts. I'm not sure if they haven't got it straight in my mind yet. We were standing guard duty at the tomb as we were ordered when suddenly the ground shook and this bright light appeared above us. Yeah, it was real, sir, and I swear, I saw an angel descending towards us. That's right. The angel waved his hand and we both just passed out. Ooh, I know it sounds crazy, sir, but I think it was some kind of magic. <laughs> you had better have some magic of your own when the governor hears what happened. Get back to the barracks. You're relieved from duty. has given her story. She's upset with us. She thinks something happened that was our fault. Well, let's go on. The investigation. The investigation has ended. And the Tribune has returned to the office to complete the report. The Centurion, however, remains on the scene 
to have the most revealing conversation with the gardener. Let's join the conversation. Relax, man. I just come to chat. You were eating. Sit down. Continue. I don't wish to disturb you. He's gone? So I heard. Well, officially I'm off duty, but I've seen him before. Mm. Oh, no, not at the crucifixion. I was on duty elsewhere that day. No, it was much earlier. May I sit down? I'll continue. As I was saying, I saw this Jesus some time ago. Let me explain. I have a servant. Mm -hmm. We were close as brothers. I don't know if I could manage without him. Anyway, he became very ill, near death. Nothing we gave him could heal him. My Jewish friend agreed to go to this Jesus and ask him if he could heal my servant. I see. Did he go inside your home? Oh, no. Not my home. He's a great person. I'm just an ordinary person. He didn't have to come to my home. I see. What happened next? I sent a message to him asking him not to come to my home, but just to heal my servant with the word, just his word. And I was having faith in him? Oh, yes. I see. And your servant? My servant healed completely. Wow. Mm. I have continued keeping an eye on this Jesus since then. Mm -hmm. He would hardly believe amazing things, or we wouldn't believe the amazing things he has done. I was not surprised when he went before Pilate. I could see it coming. He had upset so many of the religious leaders. The end was inedible. And the tomb, was that inevitable too? Hmm, I'm not sure about that. Mm. I want to see the tomb for myself. Mm. It's that way. Okay. But a woman said she had seen him alive. Alive? Yes, alive, this morning. Jesus alive? Of course. If that's the case, then it must be true. He is the Son of God. Yes. Husband, how are you coming along with the tomb? Finished? I haven't even started. Only a fool would end, tend to an empty tomb. What are you talking about? Alive. He's alive this morning. And I'm not going to miss my chance to meet him this again. I have to go. Let's go now. Jesus is alive. I'm coming. But now it's too late. He's gone. Jesus is alive. He lives. Hey, wait for me. On this Easter morning, as Christians, let us take a moment to reflect on where we are with our personal relationship with God. A person may hear only the facts about Jesus dying for our sins and still not know what happened on that day. Others, too numerous to count, have had doubts about what happened on the third day when he arose from the dead. It is only through a personal relationship with the Lord that the facts of the resurrection of Jesus 
and our salvation by faith in him can be understood and believed. May your personal relationship with Christ be strengthened as you reflect on the meaning of the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus Christ in your life today, for he lives within our hearts. My name is Donald. My name is Daniel. My name is Jerry. My name is Kim. My name is Kiana. My name is Delicia. My name is Myra. My name is Lauren. My name is Nina. My name is Brooklyn. My name is Jackson. Now I'd like to present our pastor, the Reverend Dr. H, I mean, oh, the Reverend Dr. McCarl D. Thomas. Let's give these young people another big hand for a fine job. And let's give our workers, Sister Dorch, Sister Nichols, they work with them. Come on out so the people can see you. And then I would like for all of the parents or relatives of these future stars to stand so we can thank you for making it possible for them to come out. <laughs> to God be the glory. Young folks, you did a fine job. This was a unique presentation. They started on time. You could hear them. They did not read their speeches. They said them. You did a fine job. Now put a smile on your face. It's Happy Easter. Amen. God bless you. It was worth getting up and coming out to witness this Easter program. And I want to wish all of you a very happy Easter. To God be the glory.